Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and today I've got a book review for you and it is for The Five Turns of the Wheel by Stephanie Ellis. Uh, this was sent to me by Silver Shamrock Publishing in exchange for an honest review. So first things first, I'm going to read the synopsis and then I will give you my thoughts. And one more thing about that is that there is a name on here that I have no idea how to pronounce it. I'm just going to do my best. If anybody knows how to pronounce it, uh, it's spelled H-W-E-O-L. Okay, there we go. So, here we go. All right. Stalking the landscape of rural England are the sons of Wheel, Lord of Umbra. Creatures with a taste for blood and death, they lead the dance. Five nights of ritual, the five turns of the wheel. Proclaiming these events as a celebration of Mother Nature, the grotesque mummers, troop of, of Tommy, Betty, and Fiddler, visit five villages on successive nights to lead the riots as they have done for centuries. In this blend of folk horror and dark fantasy, two women decided it is time to put a stop to the horrors committed in the name of the mother. Liza and Megan, mother and daughter, fight back to, control, to protect the unborn and to weaken the power of wheel. But will it be enough to destroy it forever? Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right or not. Anyway, first things first, this is a folk horror uh, combination of folk horror and a little bit of dark fantasy. It is mostly folk horror. Uh, now, one thing about that, uh, I am just now getting into reading more uh, folk horror. Uh, I think the last folk horror I read was actually Long Lankin. It's a young adult book. So this is still kind of new to me. So, I don't really have any literary references to go on, but anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the characters of uh, Tommy and uh, Fiddler and Betty. Tommy is the leader, and Tommy, none of these, none, these, none of these, uh, are, they look like people, so to speak, but they're not. Uh, there's just something very off about them, very different, uh, and there's a, like, an almost, um, almost inherent cruelty uh, in Tommy, uh, the character of Fiddler, he's kind of the, uh, I don't know, he's kind of, to me, he's kind of the right-hand man, and then the character of Betty, and Betty is a male, all right, Betty is a male, but Betty is very hairy, uh, uh, very, very large, I mean, we're talking about huge, okay, uh, he's kind of the man-child of the whole, whole thing, all right, uh, so anyway, they have this ritual, they go to these towns, they roll dice, they decide what town they're going to go to by rolling these dice, and when they go to the town, they perform the five turns of the wheel. So the first town is the first turn, second town, so on and so forth. Second town, second turn of the wheel, and so on. The five turns themselves are turn one, and I'm not giving away any spoilers because I'm not going to tell you exactly what goes on, but this is what they do. The first turn of the wheel is the wheel that burns. The second turn of the wheel is the wheel that crushes. The third turn of the wheel is the wheel that flies. The fourth turn of the wheel is the wheel that freezes. And the second, I'm sorry, excuse me, the fifth turn of the wheel, the final turn of the wheel, actually is not a five, there is another turn after that, so I'm really not sure why she called it the fifth turn, five turns of the wheel. But the fifth turn of the wheel is the wheel that bleeds. There it is. Now, after all this is uh, done, they do have a sixth turn of the wheel, all right, uh, which doesn't really necessarily specify what that one is. It's kind of an aftermath sort of thing. So that being said, uh, being new to literary, or excuse me, but full of, to folk horror as far as fiction is concerned, uh, this book reminded me of a, of a couple of movies, a couple or three movies that are definitely folk horror. Uh, so the first thing, the whole thing with the sacrifices, they're demanding of a sacrifice. That reminded me a lot of the 1973, or is it 74? I think 73 uh, film, The Wicker Man. And it also reminded me a lot of this past year. Was it 2019? I think it was 2019. I'd be maybe wrong about that. Actually, I think it's 2018, uh, Midsummer, uh, because of the way that both of those movies demand a sacrifice. Uh, you know, the Harga in uh, Midsummer, and then the Pagans uh, on Summer Isle and The Wicker Man. Okay, so there you go. Uh, the other thing, as I was reading this, now this is really something, and i got to give a lot of credit to Stephanie Ellis for this. When I was reading this, and the way she wrote about it, 
I thought this was a story that was taking place back in like, I don't know, the uh, 1800s, maybe the early, early 1900s. But then I start reading and I start seeing them say something about the internet and start seeing them say things about um, cars and stuff. I'm like, whoa, I had no idea this thing was taking place in modern day. So I kind of give a lot of kudos for her for doing that. Uh, it's just a nice little a little twist or whatever as you want to say. That reminded me of The Village, uh, the M. Night Shyamalan film. Now, some people hate that movie. Some people love it. Uh, but the thing that got me about that was during the movie, uh, one of the characters in the movie, because you think they're living in this old world village and this like in the long time ago and stuff like that. But then one of them said something about her sister being murdered. I think it's her sister. And uh, she says they found her body uh, beside a dumpster. And I'm like, wait a minute. The, a dumpster? That's when he kind of gave it away. And you're like, whoa, you, you know, you're, he's, they're living in modern times, but they're living in a weird way. So those examples there, the whole thing with the sacrifice and and then with the uh, the way she makes it almost seem like, like I said, she makes it seem like you're reading a book set in the old days. I thought there was really, there was a really cool uh, pluses to the, to the story. Okay, uh, then the other thing is, is that, uh, like I said, I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens during the five turns of the wheel, but they are pretty gruesome things, but she does it in such a way that is very, it reminded me a lot of Charles L. Grant's uh, books, and he was just kind of like a master of quiet horror. You know, uh, another one is Ramsey Campbell. Uh, Ramsey Campbell is one of those writers that you can, he can write these horrific things and you're sitting there reading it and you're just like, oh, okay. And you, it doesn't dawn on you until later on that he just describes something really horrific, okay? And that's the way I felt about this book with The Five Turns of the Wheel is the way she adopts that kind of a quiet horror attitude with this. Uh, so that being said, that's kind of my review for it. Those are the things I liked. Now, there were a few times that the book kind of dragged a little bit. Uh, I got a little bit, uh, uh, the chapters are fairly short, but I still got a little bit, um, thinking, you know, come on, let's, let's move this along a little bit. So for that reason, uh, alone, uh, I'm going to give this one a three and a half. It was a very three and a half star rating, uh, very entertaining, uh, very, um, uh, interesting, very reminiscent again of old, uh, of other tales of folk horror, especially in cinema, in cinema. Uh, but like I said, it does drag just a little bit in places, and therefore that is the reason for my rating. Uh, that being said, uh, yeah, that's my review of The Five Turns of the Wheel by Stephanie Ellis. And thank you. Thank you for watching. And you guys have a great evening, okay? Bye.